the Bible to the cross from the cross. Every Bible story has three components. First, God's law. Second, God's compassion. Third, God's miracle. Opening your Bible opens miracles. The Bible as one story is holy enough in our lives. Day 165 to Kings 3 to 5. The meaning behind Elisha's miracles. The backdrop to the miracles carried out by Elisha contained God's sorrowful heart, who watched the disciples struggling while evil prospered. First point Elisha, who took over Elijah, prepared for his ministry. When Ahaziah died, another son of Ahab called Joram took over the monarchy. Joram was different to his incredibly wicked father and his brother, who consulted a fly related idol. Joram got rid of the country's altars for the Baals and Asherah. Most unfortunately, however, he still followed in the way of Jeroboam. He did not get rid of the idols in Dan and Bethel. It was amidst such circumstances that Elisha went to Mount Carmel and then came down to train and teach the other prophets. Elisha did not have a home or a steady income. On many occasions, he had to feed himself in the wilderness in order to survive. Despite such hardship, Elisha did his best to deliver God's message and also put his all into teaching the prophets about God. Elisha's ministry was brought to surface through the battle between those Israel and Moab. Second point Jehoshaphat, the king of South Judah, went to find Elisha to ask for help. When Joram became the king of North Israel, Moab attacked. During the days of David, Moab was associated with Israel. But when Ahab died during the battle against Aram, Moab used this as an opportunity to disassociate them with Israel and to gain independence. When Moab raised a flag of opposition towards Israel, and stopped paying tribute, North Israel, South Judah, and Edom all came together to strike Moab. King Jehoshaphat of South Judah had previously joined with Ahab from North Israel to fight against Aram, and he also brought in Ahab's daughter as his daughter-in-law. This time, he held hands with Joram to fight against Moab. When Jehoshaphat and Joram came to strike Moab, the prophets Jehu from South Judah came to rebuke them. North Israel, South Judah, and Edom all faced hardship when they could not locate any water on their way to battle. They all did not care to ask God about this before heading out. No water was their punishment for their arrogance, and so, Jehoshaphat proposed to the kings of North Israel and Edom to ask help from Elisha. They all went to find Elisha. The reason Elisha met with them was because of Jehoshaphat. Elisha told the three kings where they would find water and also predicted that they would win the war. When the king of Moab saw that the chances of their victory were faint, he killed his eldest son who was to take over his throne by burning him. When the three countries saw this, they stopped the war and returned home. Third point, Elisha's miracle shows just how difficult it was for prophets to minister during those days. In two kings, There are many records of the miracles carried out by Elisha. First, there was the miracle of pouring oil into empty containers. The second was the miracle of a Shunammite woman having a son. 
The third miracle was the woman's son being restored from death. The fourth was the miracle of turning the poisoned soup into edible food. The fifth miracle was the feeding of a hundred. Fourth point, Naaman from Aram was able to experience God's miracle through Elisha and his men. Naaman, who was a brave soldier in the Aram army, heard that he could be healed from leprosy through a girl who was brought in as a captive. And so Naaman wanted to get help from the king of Aram and to go to North Israel. So the king of Aram sent a letter to North Israel to heal Naaman. But when the king of North Israel read this letter, he tore his robes and misunderstood that he had to be the one to heal. When Elisha heard this, he told him to send Naaman to him. But when Naaman was brought to him, Elisha did not actually meet him. He told Naaman through his servant of the way he can be healed. Naaman was very displeased at Elisha's attitude and said that he would return to Aram with a grudge in his heart. Naaman had expected Elisha to heal him by placing his hand on his leprosy. Thus, he regarded Elisha's method to have been lacking in effort. But due to the advice from his servants, Naaman listened to Elisha's message and was healed from leprosy. When he was healed, he offered thanks to God and repented for worshiping Riman. Fifth point, Lot's wife, Achan and Gihazi, failed to read the atmosphere of their times. Gihazi went after Naaman after he was healed and then told a lie in order to receive something from him. Elisha rebuked Gihazi for doing this. He rebuked Gihazi for accepting silver, cloth, and servants. What Gihazi should have done was to focus on God. The Bible records similar people to Gihazi who focused more on materials rather than God. One example is a lost wife who turned to a pillar of salt because of her greed. Another example is a Khan who took the goose during the conquering of Ai. Saul is also a case when he saved the king of Amalek in order to keep the materials. Judas Iscariot also fits into this list, as he took silver pieces and sold Jesus. Indeed, human greed often leads to sin. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. I am so excited that you have in your hands now and on your phones the Tongdok Bible app. And let me tell you why. Very few people, just a handful of people in the world understand the way Dr. Zhou does, the way that this is one story from Genesis to Revelation, one story. And what does it mean for us to daily live that story as our life story? And he has found a way to do this. We need daily marinating of our mind and the soaking of our spirit in in the Word of God. And that's why a, a, a Tom Doc Bible is so important. The scriptures, the story, Genesis to Revelation, is the daily mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathings of the Spirit of God into humans to make us truly who God made us to be. And that's why this app is so important. This app shows you how to do mouth, that God, enables God to do mouth to mouth resuscitation on you every day of your life, 365 days a year. I'm so glad you have it. You will 
feel the healing that comes from mouth-to-mouth breathings of the Spirit on you as you use this app.